you know, ultimately at the end of the day, being a small time streamer does have its perks, its rewards emotionally. But one of the most frustrating aspects, if you know, not represented by the high media hall of shame at hmedia.gg slash hall of shame, is the amount of scammers, bots, and solicitors that routinely try to waste my time and many small streamers' time with scams, shenanigans, lies, you know, the whole nine yards. Playing with our emotions. But, you know, at the day, on the 9th of July, when I received a Twitch message in chat from a Corpheus Championships, I he was forthright and said, yeah, I'm soliciting. But, you know, what? functionally, at the end of the day, he was pretty nice about it. So, against my better judgment, I heard him out. And he wasn't just trying to solicit me for overlay services. He wanted to, me to try his new game, Orpheus Championships, a card game, which is probably why he was lurking in the lobbies for Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Now, that being said, I gave it a shot. I thought it was going to be a link to some sketchy WordPress site to download Malware on my thing, but no, to my surprise, when I asked, do you have a Steam or Epic Games link, he had an Epic's link, and so I dusted off at the Epic Games store on my machine, had it creak open because I haven't opened it since I since I uh, rebought Borderlands 3 on, on Steam after its limited time period was released, and ultimately ended up giving this game a shot. Now, the game footage you see was of... This is game footage from me, essentially, uh, doing my first impressions, kind of thinking things out. I've removed the audio from this just for, you know, sanity's sake. I will say that uh, I, I'll get to my nitpicks about UI and choices of that regard in the end, but I do want to talk about the actual substance of the game because that's what matters. And then I, we can talk about things like what I like, what I dislike, what I think we can do better. But let's get you up to speed and talk about how the game is actually played. You start the game by the, the going first player picks out a boss. The boss is going to is the unique function that you have here in the, in uh, Corpheus Champions. You and your opponent, uh, if you're going first, you pick your. Uh, your uh, Corpheus champion, or think of it as like your commander, but on top of you know having a sum being summonable and restricting you to only summoning that you card that turn, uh, you that for being quite powerful, you also uh, have the a win con that is tied to them. Um, there are, are uh, hero monsters that once you pick your uh, Corpheus card and and and, sp and specifically your Corpheus mission, which is basically your win con your like alternative win condition, other than knocking your opponent's health to zero, which is, in, in my personal opinion, a more reliable way of winning the game. Um, you also have your hero monsters. Every single Corpheus champion, as it were, uh, is tied to a, I would say, a tribe. There are ten tribes total, five split between the dovish and hawkish sides, which are basically light and dark. Um, you have on the on the dovish side, you have crystal hearted, which uh, at which adds um, crystals to your inventory, and then monsters will uh, think think the crystal hearted will be very much. A good place for people who have played magic. You accrue red and blue uh, resources, and then you summon monsters to do things with those resources. I found playing against the dumb dumb AI as part of the game, just stacking on red uh, orbs, getting the boss uh, that boss special ability that bounces things back to your deck, and then just using the burn card three times. You're in and out in under 10 turns. It's wild. But uh, there, that's the Crystal Hearted. Time Traveler has this thing called Advanced Time, which is unique. If Advanced Time is activated, uh, it, it basically interacts with other things on the field that have Advanced Time. And if you have Advanced Time this turn, 
uh, other effects will activate. So if you hypothetically had a monster on field, a hero on field that advanced time, then you summon another monster immediately after, it knows that you did advance time. You can't do it. Next up, have the Order of Merit. These are, big, these, are your, these are your ones that love to swarm. One on the field is bad. Many on the field is busted. They love being summoned, and they love being all together on the field. It is and it is quite shenanigans. Uh, from Order of Merit, we're on to Galaxian Mars, which is just and in and and Galaxians of Venus. These are basically gender the gender war tribes. All men on Mars, all all women on Venus. The Venus ones are more defensive and healing based. Uh, the uh, Galaxians of Mars are just unga bunga wah wah wah. Uh, the Galaxians of Mars have the ability to man up. Don't know about the longevity of that of that term, but I digress. Uh, they, uh, it it basically allows them to get powered up and in in power up each other based off of you know other people within the tribe and and other people activating uh, man up around them. It is basically Unga Bunga Gober. The Galaxians of Venus, by contrast, are um, more defensive and healing in nature. There are different types of... I've talked at length about the heroes, and now we're getting into uh, the skills and why the types matter. There are these little orbs in the corner of the, uh, of the cards that look like, effectively... You know, just colors. Uh, you have like a white orb of something that looks like swords, and it looks like a bow. These I think are these are your different uh, uh, hero types, and depending on the hero you summon this turn, that dictates what skill you can be able to use. That is the ultimate combination. You start the game by picking your Corpheus, change it if you need to in later turns, but primarily you play a hero, and then the hero you play dictates what skills you are able to use. Um, the Dovish, the light, and the dark hawkish have their own skills as well, um, but by and large, a lot of them are the same in terms of bouncing one opponent's back to the deck, dealing direct damage to your opponent, dealing damage to a single enemy, dealing damage to all enemies, so on and so forth. Uh, and you basically beat your opponent back and forth this way in this Hearthstone-ass fashion until one of you gets put to zero. Uh, there is a the the the, the shield type bond, uh, heroes uh, will stick around and, and block damage, uh, tanking damage as it were, and uh, and um, lastly, since I've covered everything so far, I want to talk about uh, the bosses because I did I re I'm realizing now in hindsight I didn't necessarily. Uh, get into that quite so much, and this is my third time trying to make this recording, and I'm not restarting this binge over again. Um, the boss that you pick at the at the beginning has an effect that you that is played every single turn, like I said, and you can attack it, and the person who kills it gets to summon it to your field to the, your their field. Ultimately, the boss encompasses two aspects of strategy. One. Do you pick a boss based off something you actually want to get, but not have, but not necessarily have like the, the guarantee that you're going to get it, or do you want to build a boss based off how it interacts with the, with the effects of the cards you're playing in your tribe? Uh, that, but at the risk of your opponent killing the boss and removing uh, a, a linchpin for your strategy out of the hole. Pretty intuitive, interesting design, all things considered. But I digress. Let's move on to the hawkish uh, stuff. I personally like the uh, Blood Child tribe, which is the first one on the hawk on the dark side. And the whole purpose is to collect blood, which is a, similar to the gems, is an item you add to your inventory. And then subsequently, uh, the more you collect and spend, it is art. It is on. It is. It it should feel more powerful than the gem generation because you are expending resources for certain abilities as much as you are getting them. And it's slow to generate them. It's about as slow generating them as it is generating um, gems. But my one criticism is, is, is that the abilities that consume blood to make them proc are not 
necessarily stellar. Um, they're, they're not as powerful as I think they should be, but I think by and large, the blood thing is interesting. Um, next up, you have the Heartbreakers. This is uh, basically your change of heart card dot, uh, uh, tribe dot deck. This base, the char the charm ability in there, they activate abilities based off of charming your opponent's heroes, making them come over to your side, and then also subsequently having abilities that proc based on how many charmed heroes you have access to. It can get pretty um, broken. Uh, next up, we have Order of Malice. Order of Malice basically sends bonds when you has it send monsters to in turn. Uh, turn to, uh, what was it called? Uh, turn to blazes? Take to blazes. Uh, and what it is, is, is that oh, when you take an enemy to blazes, it's basically a banish them. It is now, there's now like a burning little circle on the, on the table, denoting, hey, these are the heroes that have been sent to blazes. And then you, there's abilities, depending on how many are in the blazes zone. Uh, you can, they, they just do stuff. It's, Similar to, uh, like, think of it as like a banished zone from Yu-Gi-Oh. Next, we have one-shot wonders. One-shot is basically insta-kill. The as long as the the one-shot mechanics are as long as you, uh, as long as uh, the enemies that you target with the effect uh, match the requirements on the activation on the on the activation or summon ability, that monster is insta-killed. Can be pretty busted. There are summon ones that allow you to. Uh, basically summon a monster and then one-shot an enemy under 9 health, effectively killing most enemies in the game. And then, if it's just on summon one, you can then attack immediately afterwards. Quite broken. And the last uh, tribe within the uh, the dark side, the hawkish side, are the Fireplay Rebels. The Fireplay Rebels basically throw something called a burn counter on the top of your opponent's thing, and basically... Uh, that burn they, the more that burn counter goes up, the more shenanigans that will be done. It's mainly made around to deal direct damage based off of the burn counter number. If you if if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player and you immediately thought chain burn, you are on the right direction. So you basically take all of these different playstyles across different tribes and try to beat the fuck out of each other. There are three different type damage types: there's range damage, magic damage, and uh, melee damage, and they are denoted by a sword, a bow, and a staff. Um, on the damage type bar, the blue bar on the side, and or, or like the blue or yellow bar in the bottom right, left. My bad, bottom left, and then and its health is on the other is on the left side. Unlike things like Magic the Gathering, not Magic the Gathering, um, Hearthstone, where you lose health when you attack something, regardless. Uh, that's not in play here. Uh, things that stay, stay. Um, enemies can be aggressed. I, I, aggro. Uh, there is no summoning sickness in this game. You do get summoning sickness if you activate an activatable effect, and you're not you're not able to attack. Um, if you, so long as you don't attack anything at the end of your turn, your heroes go basically hide during your opponent's turn, and aren't liable to getting destroyed the moment you attack. You are now oppressed. Um, I think that's basically it, by and large, for actual the actual mechanics of the game. But um, there are some things that we do need to talk about, broadly speaking, as far as the actual mechanics of how to play the game. I do, I I do personally think that some, being able to summon your 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 uh, commander, your uh, uh, Orpheus, in spirit form and, ha and having pretty bonkers abilities and stuff with it is pretty cool. I think that's a pretty awesome choice. I think the I, I think the uh, propensity for keeping like slow play and like it's a it's a, they're, 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 you don't really, even though you're only playing usually one hero and one skill if you're not playing your the spirit form of Orpheus. You know, and you're you're able to do a lot. These cards you have at your disposal, if even if you just stick within your tribe, is pretty verbose. Here's the thing, though. Um, the actual way that the game is played is not great. Um, the onboarding for the new player experience onboarding is generally kind of abysmal. Um, 
you know, you know, even Master didn't do this right. I think ultimately having a if we just, for example, have the uh, you know when you boot up the game and you in, in for the first time, the game should say, "Hey, this is your first. If this this is it's like this is your first time playing." Here is how to here we're here's a solo mode where we take you through the mechanics of each tribe and how it and how here first of all here's a tutorial on how the fucking game works and then here's tutorials for each of the individual tribes so you can see their different play styles and how they play but you don't get any of that i had to basically spend about an hour and a half of my life trying to sort of suss out how this works and unfortunately, anyways, regard what regardless, forget what I was saying. It's ultimately um, the onboarding is not very good. Uh, this is a uh, free to play game. This is a game that requires no money to start, um, and there is a store where you can buy these coins that can be used to buy purely cosmetic items. All cards are currently available. You can build whatever you can play whatever decks you want them, but it seems like, at least as far as like the actual game is concerned, um, you have access to basically the entire card pool, which is strange. Um, maybe that kind of like just breaks things down into are you like are you able to are you able to play most optimal optimally over somebody else? Um, I think Personally, I th I wish there was like a more deck building element to it, but you know, again, this is a new game. This is a new application. Obviously, somebody's passion. The ob obviously, it's a creator's passion project. So I'm trying to be as generous as I can. I think ultimately, I'm going to be very critical from this point on. But I want to be very clear when I say that all of the criticisms I have these are constructive criticisms. I think the bones of this game are good. I think the bones of this game are good and in, and are good in theory and I think um, ultimately the player experience of both of onboarding and uh, and and so on and so forth I think is uh, pretty is, is, is going to be paramount. So for anybody listening who likes Corpheus championships, I kind of like it too. I like the mechanics of the game. I like the, how it works in theory. It just seems kind of like, uh, like a version of Magic that is less moving parts. Um, I think it's a good. I think it's good in concept, but there's some a lot of fine tuning that needs to be done. We're just gonna go through this constructive criticism, lightning. Uh, try to do it lightning fast. First, first of all, not a fan of the UI but it's serviceable for what it is. Um, the having the not having a dedicated settings menu um, where you, I can fiddle with the UI, where I can fiddle with the brightness, where I can fiddle with uh, all manner of things and just having a little menu where it allows me to turn the music off and on is not something I'm necessarily super fond of. Um, I do, I, 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 I think that the, cause I think that the idea of while well, I'm not super fond of the idea of a of a rough early access title like this having um, free to play elements in terms of cosmetic uh, in terms of the fact that it's cosmetics I think it's perfectly fine I think you know you got to get the bills paid somehow you got to pay for server hosting somehow and I respect that um, I do like the concept that they have of being able uh, that the people have of being able to edit cards directly. And change borders, backs, fonts, foils, artworks. There's different artworks depending on. Um, you know, there's animated versions. There are holiday versions. Um, you know, I think that's all well and good. Um, I do think that uh, I wish I more places had the ability for you to edit your cards directly how they look and maybe even like buy and one of the things i did notice is that there is like a marketplace where people can like bought sell their own skins and stuff and it's problem sharing stuff which i think is admirable um i do think that 
the propensity to have a profile, a, a, a character, is interesting in theory. Uh, and the emotes and stuff that you have with it while in the matches is fine. I haven't the faintest idea why my care like the character needs to walk around the the board and around the arena. I don't think that is necessarily. I routinely seem to feel like I knock out myself into like a different camera when I'm trying to play the game and I'm clicking around and it. It's not uh, great. Uh, the servers, I don't know if the servers work or not with like finding a, a matchmaking service. Um, I, I I was in, I was I sat waiting for a match for something like 15 minutes. Nothing. I think that's just like because it's a small game. You know, the YouTube, you know, the YouTube channel has, you know, eight subscribers, 45 videos. Their Twitch channel has a uh, uh, 100 has, has, a, has about 142 followers. Um, I do, but it, you know, they're obviously like I, I'm not like, and I want to be clear, I'm not. There is zero shade here on this. Uh, I am somebody who has tried to get products up and going. My own YouTube channel, like I just give all the respects to Play Corpheus that I can. Um, I do think that uh, a lot of the you know, there's a lot of features here that aren't necessarily improving the experience. They're novelties. I do think that I do want the UI, like, ultimately, when playing the actual game itself, um, I, I would like, you know, a much more smooth experience in that regard. And I would like also a screen that, you know, tells me all the command like if I click this, what happens? If I click this, what happens? Just I I am starved for information. This application, the game is good, the application is is not. And that is kind of my big stick. I would implore everybody watching to go give it a shot. I did actually enjoy playing the game itself. It's just the it is it can be a I feel a little cumbersome to actually play said game. And so I am unsure uh, where where Corpus Championship is going to go. Um, they do, I, I did, I am very grateful because they do have a, uh, is through their chat, like clicking the chat button, which is basically brings the glorified version of their Discord. Um, I found out a cool widget bot thing, like a, 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 a documentation for Discord. And, uh, I honestly think that's pretty cool. I learned something new as a developer, so I can't really give like flag and that. The other thing that I will say that they did really good with this is the uh, idea of trading. Um, there, they are. They added the ability. The, the, obviously, there's an intent and ability to when the game eventually does remove all of the cards and then makes it so you have to sort of like pick a starting pack. And then try and get other cards and stuff by paying real world, like real world money or, or whatever. Being able to trade cards with your opponent uh, with with other people, I think that is a great idea. Definitely right for abuse, for sure, and certainly a way for people to get around spending money. But I think that the moral, you know, I think that the one of the biggest things of like in card games is trading cards with your friends. It's a trading card game, and the notion that like you know. Like now that I've moved, many of us have moved on to digital only formats, that aspect is lost, and I'd like to see them fostering that. By and large, uh, I'm going to separate Orpheus Championships. Like I think the gameplay, like the actual game itself, in terms of, of a of concept, is a solid like seven, eight out of ten. But I will say, as of now, the actual application and like a lot of the ancillary issues I had with it kind of put it more as like a four, five out of ten, maybe. I think that if the actual methods of like actually playing the game and and you know and instead of like having to manually click your the the discard pile that is present on the actual representation of the table itself to view your discard pile and all of that and you know explaining like I it took me probably forty five minutes to realize I have to click the actual Corpheus you know card on the table itself to summon the spirit version. And that was, you know, a little frustrating. I think, ultimately, 
Um, there are some UI decisions that need to be changed here to make the game more enjoyable to play. And I think once that's done, um, I think it, it'll be a lot easier, I think, to retain players that do give it a shot. The hard part is getting people to try it up front, but I do think that Porpheus Champions does have a shot. And I, as much as I like the game, I don't know if I'm personally going to be playing it until, like, you know, there's a better... I think uh, like a better at least, at, even if not onboarding experience, certainly just a you know the the actual method of play and like selecting cards and you know having indicators showing what phase we're in and you know making it so I and ideally you know picking a tribe or building an actual deck of just features like that right I think that ultimately will be um, will make me want to go back. I do say I and these are and this is and I do want to. I do have some, some some philosophical critiques as well. I think, ultimately, you need to build, and this is mainly for you know, developers, I understand wanting to do pro, having, having pro play and stuff like that. I respect that. And I can see the the intent the, the, the deal with that. And the problem is is that you can't have any pro player. Like nobody's a pro at this game, except maybe you. Nobody's a professional at this game. You you can't have professionals until you have noobs and scrubs. And to get those, the game has to be, you know, fun. Not only to like to play mechanically, but to fun to actually sit down and play. Uh, you know, like you put buttons on and stuff. So I think ultimately these UI issues have to be fixed. Like the bones are here, but the priority of focusing on getting people to roads, like to, to, to pro, is not going to lead to you know, a successful game. And I and I would like to see this game have, you know, at the very least, at bare minimum, a, a strong cult following. It, I think it deserves that at the very least. But I don't know. I go go check out Corpheus Championships on um on Epic Game Store. I'll be tagging their YouTube channel in this video so you can easily find the Epic Games Store link on their YouTube. Um as far as everything else, I think I've kind of said my piece. Um I'm hoping that the game um gets some a glow up and I'm hoping that there is more effort put into the new player experience because you know, as a, a player of Yu-Gi-Oh, and you know, who is as a person who has you know met Magic players, one of the biggest things you know making it difficult to have you know our preferred card games grow and be successful is ultimately the new player experience being not good. I'm hoping that Orpheus Champions chips can be an outlier therein really do the things needed to do to be better, make that, to like put magic Yu-Gi-Oh! and to a lesser extent Pokemon in the dust. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening. I appreciate you, your time, and your viewership. You've been wonderful. I appreciate you, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you want to support the show, please consider doing so at hmedia.gg slash tip, and if God forbid you want to clock into a Corpheus game, you can find me at discord.gg, at hamedia.gg slash discord to join my server and my community, but if you really want to find a game, you should probably join the Corpheus server. Anyhow, so, have a going, folks.